Welcome back to the Addictive Wellness Channel. I'm Sage, and today we're diving deep into the blue sea to compare these three popular supplements, fish oil, krill oil, and algae oil. So grab your favorite bar of chocolate, have a seat, and let's get into it. First, let's get to know our contenders. Fish oil is extracted from the tissues of oily fish like salmon, mackerel, and sardines. It's rich in omega-3 fatty acids, in particular EPA and DHA, which are essential for brain health, heart health, and overall well-being. Krill oil, on the other hand, comes from tiny crustaceans called krill. It's also a great source of omega-3s, but in a different form. Plus, it contains a powerful antioxidant called astaxanthin. And finally, algae oil is derived from marine algae. While it's algae, so it's technically not a plant-based source, it is a non animal-based source, let's say, of DHA and EPA, which makes it a fantastic option for vegetarians and vegans. So now, how do these three stack up against each other? Let's start with the nutritional content and omega-3 ratios. Fish oil is well known for its high EPA and DHA levels. Typically, fish oil supplements contain a higher ratio of EPA to DHA, often around 3 to 2 or 2 to 1, depending on the source and the brand and how they mix it. This means you're getting a significant amount of both, but a bit more on the side of EPA. Krill oil also contains EPA and DHA, but in a phospholipid form. This means it's easier for our bodies to absorb it. The ratio of EPA to DHA in krill is closer to one to one, so you're getting a more balanced intake of these essential fatty acids. And don't forget about the astaxanthin in krill oil, which adds an extra layer of antioxidant protection. Actually, astaxanthin is so awesome for eye health and skin health that I actually take a dedicated astaxanthin supplement on pretty much a daily basis. Algae oil is going to be unique because it provides a direct source of DHA and EPA without the need for fish or krill. And most algae oil supplements have a higher ratio of DHA to EPA, so the reverse of what we saw with the fish oil. So here you're seeing from 2 to 1 or even up to 4 to 1 DHA to EPA. Now, before we explain why these ratios matter, if you're enjoying this video so far, please do me a favor and click the like button and subscribe to our channel. It doesn't cost you a penny, and it's hugely supportive of our tiny family business. And if you'd like to learn more about that tiny family business, visit AddictiveWellness.com to find the healthiest and most delicious sugar-free chocolates, adaptogens, and herbal elixirs. Now, why do these ratios matter? EPA and DHA, while both being long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, play slightly different roles in our health. EPA, or eicosapentaenoic acid, is known for its strong anti-inflammatory properties. So it's particularly effective in reducing inflammation throughout the body, which can then help with conditions like arthritis and cardiovascular disease. EPA is also important for mood regulation and can help manage symptoms of depression. DHA, or docosahexaenoic acid, is a major structural component of the brain, retina, and many other parts of the body, and especially the nervous system. It's crucial for brain health and brain development, particularly in infants and young children, but it's still going to be important throughout life. DHA really supports cognitive function, memory, and even eye health. Having a balance of both EPA and DHA makes sure that you're going to get the comprehensive benefits of omega-3s. A higher EPA ratio is going to be beneficial for reducing inflammation and improving heart health, while on the other hand, if you have more DHA going on, it's going to be a bit better for brain health and cognitive function. And when it comes to absorption, krill oil has the upper hand because of its omega-3s being bound to phospholipids, making them more bioavailable. Fish oil and algae oil contain omega-3s in the triglyceride form, which our bodies can still use, but it's not going to absorb as efficiently. With fish and krill, it's also important to make sure that they're being caught sustainably. Algae oil, however, is the most sustainable option here. It's grown in a controlled environment, so it's going to reduce the impact on marine ecosystems. Now, of course, no supplement is perfect. Fish oil can sometimes cause a fishy aftertaste, or fish burp, sometimes people call it, which isn't exactly pleasant. Now, krill oil doesn't usually have this issue, but it can be more expensive, and it might not be suitable for those with shellfish allergies. And algae oil, while generally well-tolerated, can also be on the pricier side. An important consideration when choosing omega-3 supplements is also the risk of heavy metal contamination, especially mercury. 
Fish oil derived from larger fish can sometimes contain higher levels of mercury and other heavy metals due to bioaccumulation up the food chain because those big fish are eating lots of smaller fish and concentrating all their heavy metals. It's crucial to choose a high quality purified fish oil supplement that's tested for heavy metals so you can minimize this risk. Krill oil is coming from small crustaceans, very low on the food chain. So it generally is a much lower risk of heavy metal contamination compared to fish oil, but it's still good to ask for test results. Algae oil, of course, is gonna stand out here, again, as the safest option concerning heavy metal contamination because it's grown in a controlled environment. So there's very minimal risk of exposure to heavy metals. Let's talk also about the processing steps that each of these oils undergo and how those steps can affect the quality of the omega-3s that you're actually consuming. Fish oil is the most heavily processed. It typically undergoes several steps like deacidification, winterization, deodorization, molecular distillation, and decolorization. These processes help to remove impurities, things like heavy metals and other contaminants, but they can also potentially reduce some of the natural nutrients in the oil. So molecular distillation, for example, involves heat, which can potentially oxidize the omega-3s if that heat level is not carefully controlled. Oxidation can reduce the efficacy of the omega-3s and create actually some harmful byproducts. But high quality fish oil supplements are gonna generally use advanced techniques to minimize this oxidation and maximize the preservation of the nutritional integrity of those oils. Krill oil processing involves enzymatic extraction and cold processing, which helps to preserve the phospholipids and the astaxanthin. These processes are generally gentler than those that are being used on fish oil, and so it's going to help maintain the integrity and the bioavailability of these omega-3s. The addition of antioxidants like astaxanthin also helps to protect the oil from oxidation. Now, algae oil is typically produced through a controlled cultivation process, followed by extraction, purification, and stabilization. These steps, of course, are going to make sure that the oil is free from contaminants and maintaining a high level of purity and bioavailability. And finally, let's talk about value. What is going to give you the most bang for your buck? With fish oil, you're typically looking at about 20 to 30 cents per gram of omega-3. With krill oil, it's around 75 cents per gram. But I think here, you also have to factor in that you're getting around 1.5 times to two times better absorption because the krill oil omega-3s are phosphorylated. So you could kind of adjust that to 37 to 50 cents per gram. And then algae oil comes in around a dollar per gram of omega-3s. Now maybe in the future, they'll get more efficient at producing the algae oil because it's still a pretty new product and we'll see algae oils that are more price competitive. Let's keep an eye on that for sure. For me personally, I currently use krill oil. I like that it's phosphorylated for better absorption. I like not burping up fish flavor. I like the astaxanthin that it naturally delivers. I like the lower risk of contamination, the lighter processing required, and the nicely balanced one-to-one -one EPA to DHA ratios. Now, what about you? Do you have a favorite amongst the three? Let me know which one and why down in the comments. And before you go, here's a link to a video that I think you'd enjoy watching next. And here's one the YouTube algorithm thinks you'd enjoy. And there's a link to our website. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you all again next time.